so there should be a new one uh, next next week and the one that was on yesterday was the one that we recorded before the summer it was meant to be like the big you know we're going on a summer break sort of thing and that's maybe why people didn't realize that there wasn't because in that one we were like we're gonna go on a summer break we won't be one for like a month or whatever and then it, it came out yesterday because I think Flax forgot to send his files or something. No, what game is this? It's like a it's like a programming game, I guess. Intro to Calc for Art Majors. Okay, let's try this out and see how it goes. What's four plus two? Seven. What's five minus three? Seven. What's one times three? Seven. How is anyone supposed to know? We're not scientists. That's why you got a calculator. Yes, you can now use your new calc command. Use it to add or subtract or whatever else calculators do. Let's practice. Please add one to each of your data cubes below and place them back on the floor again. You can do this. Right. This is an easy one. So we pick up here. Um, and then we calc, we say my item plus one, um, and then we drop the thing. Wait, do we have to, can we just do it like that? Do we have to like write it? Oh, I see. And then we have to write mem one and then drop. We did it. We did it in four commands, and our average was three seconds below the target of four. That's great. Okay, intro to calc complete. And we got two green lights for that one as well. Dangerous spread cheating. Dangerous spread cheating. Year 37. Hiccup. Ugh, did everyone have fun at the holiday party? Oh, you weren't invited? Well, I'm sure cleaning up after party is just as fun as being at the party. It appears someone got into this room and damaged a uh, hiccup bunch of data. So the tech support people want us to take inventory. See that table of data there? Just add up each row and write the total sum of each row in that column over on the right. I mean on the right. <laughs> Ugh, it was a rough night. Watch out for the hiccup hole. holes. Holes. Okay, it's gonna be tough with the holes. So, so we have to add up each row, and then we have to place the sum of that row uh, here. But we also have to avoid holes, <clears throat> which is gonna be a bit tough, actually. How the hell are we gonna avoid these holes? Is there some way that we can? Um... Oh, that's really weird. We have to. We'll have to write like some sort of routine, I think, for getting them around the holes. Uh, so they'll have to like, so this guy will have to like, take a note of this one, go, find the hole, and then he'll have to work his way around the hole, right? He'll have to check to see when it's safe for him to go back up. That's kind of annoying, actually. It's kind of annoying, but I think we can do it, right? Um, I mean, for these, for the, for the ones where there is no hole, it should be pretty easy, right? So we're going to say, we want you to step forward, and if direction in front of you is a uh, data cube we want you to um, set mem1 equals your item no actually we want to calc don't we we want to do calc here we want to do calc mem1 equals calc uh, my item plus mem1 plus my item right or no actually we can just we don't even need to pick it up and we can just say direction and then we can say step forward again but before we do that we have to say if the direction in front of you equals um, nothing or direction in front of you is actually you know what screw this we'll say if direction in front of you is uh, not a hole, then step forward. Else, we want you to step down. And then we want to say if um,
is a hole, then step forward again. And then we want to jump. And then else, we want you to... So actually, so hang on, if it's not that, then we want you to step forward and then step up and then we want you to jump back to here. Oh no, but there's blanks and stuff too, right? So it might not work. Hang on a second. So hang on, so what's this person doing? So this person sees a data cube, takes mem1, and adds um, the value of the data cube to mem1. So that's six, so that's fine. And then she steps forward. Oh, hang on a second. We forgot to put the, uh, the other jump in here too, didn't we? We forgot to put like the big, the big loop in. Okay, so she comes up to here, sees that it's a three, adds it to mem one, cool, and then she goes forward. Now she sees a six, she should add that, so we should have nine in there in mem one, perfect, and then she moves forward. So this guy at a blank here, so if it's a blank, or if direction is uh, nothing, we want to do this, right? Okay, so she's got three, and then she goes through to the nine, so she should have 12 in mem one. Perfect. And then she has a two, 14. Oh, I see, hang on a second. So this guy's just stuck here forever. He can't, he's just gonna skip that. He's. All these people at the holes are going to skip this now. So hang on a second. So we're checking to see if in front of you is not equal to a hole. Which is what we should be doing here, I guess. So if what's in front of you is not a hole, and keep going. Um, and then else, if it is a hole, uh, then we want you to do uh, this stuff here, right? We want you to step. Not that way. We want you to step, step down. And then we want to move all this stuff down here too, right? Like that, I think. Okay, let's see what this guy does. Okay, so he picks up the nine and he adds it to We can get rid of this now. Okay. Let's see if this works. Hang on a second. So she's got the zero. She adds it. She should step forward now. She's got the... Th oh, fuck. Okay, they're falling into the hole. They step down. So we need them to step forward here as well, right? But then... Oh, hang on a sec. Okay, so they step down. So they're stepping down, and then they're stepping across. So... Okay, hang on. That might do it. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this guy picks up his one. No, he doesn't. He's skipping. Oh, hang on a second. So we don't want these guys to step at all here. Okay, so this guy gets his three. He moves forward. He sees nothing. It's still three. Okay, he sees a hole. He steps down. He steps across. He steps over and up. Oh, but then he's got to get... 
Oh, okay, I see. So hang on a second. So we have to say uh, if it, if that's... Oh my god, this is so annoying. So mem1 is plus... So it can't be like this. It's got to be like that. Okay, so they get zero. And then this guy gets his two. He goes down. He comes back up. Okay, two plus two is four. Did one of them just fall in a hole? No, I think we're still good. Wait, did he not take that nine? He didn't take the nine. But he's taken the seven. Okay, and then when they get to the end, so we want to say uh, if if whatever is directly in front of you is a wall, then we want to uh, pick up the cube that you're standing on, and then we want to write mem1, and then what, drop it and end? So he takes the 2, but he didn't take the 9. And he writes 10, 20. Okay, how come he didn't take this 9, though? So when he steps up and he steps up, then, then he jumps back to there. So he should be writing that. How come he's not? Hang on a second. So let's see. So we know this guy here. Okay, so he steps, so, okay, first he takes his number, which is zero, then he steps forward. Then he takes one, and adds it, good, steps forward. Now he should step down and avoid the hole. So he steps forward, and then he, does he take the nine here? Yeah, he takes the nine. He didn't take the two, though. Oh, that's... Oh, I, I need to step through it again. Hang on a second. He's just, like, missing some of them. Okay, so hang on. He takes the five. He steps forward. And then he realizes that there is a hole. So he steps down. Then he checks to see if there's a hole diagonally to him. There is. So he steps forward. And he sees that there's no hole diagonally to him. So he steps forward and steps up. Okay, and then ahead of him is a is a is not a hole, so he writes the eight. And then ahead of him is a hole, so he steps down. Oh. Okay, so actually here we want to have this calc equals mem one. Plus. Okay, so he's got the four. I'm just watching this guy. Four plus nothing. Now he's gonna avoid the hole. So he do four plus four is eight. Should do eight plus one is nine. Skip the hole, and then he should do nine plus six, which is fifteen. Perfect. 15 plus 0, and then he writes the 15. Oh, boys, I think we got it. I think we've done it. Just one more. We did it! 13 or fewer commands. We used 19, and our average speed was 38 seconds instead of 32. We did it! Overcomplicated it, but it worked. It doesn't matter. I don't mind. I don't mind overcomplicating it. As long as it worked, right? It's it's reasonable. It's not like perfect, but it's reasonable. That was a fun one. Printing etiquette one. Man, we're blasting through these now. We're on year 39.
Yes, we need to have a conversation. Someone in this room, we won't say who, has been abusing their printing privileges. They are printing personal holiday cards, photos of themselves standing in front of the bathroom mirror, excerpts from some sort of fan fiction novella. They are clearly lonely. Yes, we need to learn to limit our printer usage and not print like we're trapped in some sort of infinite loop as if data can be copied indefinitely. Yes, please work through our printing mindfulness assignment. I'll just leave the pamphlet's instructions over there. We need to increase our awareness of our printing. Each worker must print exactly five data cubes and place them anywhere on the floor and really think about the impact of each one. Each worker must print exactly five data cubes and place them anywhere on the floor and then really think about the impact of each one. So I'm probably going to have to do like a counter for this, right? No? What job has holes in it? I don't know. Will I ever continue Divinity Original Sid 2 with Lewis and Flax? I don't know. We talked to today about potentially doing like um, a stream, all three of us together, like a day long stream where we play like Hearts of Iron or some, you know, like some, some game like that. So maybe we could do Divinity as well. The idea would just be to stream it all day and then take the footage and cut it up and put it onto Double Dragon. Um, but it's just trying to get Lewis um, sort of like in for a stream all day. And then Flax too can't really stream all day either because uh, he's got to leave it like three or whatever to pick up his kids. So we'll, we'll try to do it. Sounds great. Yeah. Will you ever continue? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, just answer. Yeah, probably. Maybe. We'll kidnap him. Sips, if you beat level 61, you're my hero. Okay. We got a ways to go. All right. So what we need to do is um, nearest uh, printer is Mem1. We would like to um, take from Mem1. Okay. Uh, and then we would like to calc mem2 is going to be uh, mem2 plus 1. Right? So mem2, so we're going to do a counter, okay? And then we're going to say um, if mem2 is equal to um, 5, then um, end right? We just want to end if that happens. So we're going to take from uh, mem1 and then we're going to say uh, once you've taken from mem1 we're going to uh, drop we're going to step in any direction and drop it on the floor and then drop it right? And then we're going to jump back whoops to the start every time, right? And that should just work. What happened? Okay, we have to follow one through now. Okay, so we take from... We take from the floor and drop it. And then two is equal to one, right? And then we go back and do the same thing. And then mem1 should equal two. two. Oh god, okay, so we have to put some stuff in here as well. So we have to say if um, where I'm standing is equal to a data cube and step away until we find uh, something else and then um, we have to say like if equals nothing and then drop and then jump back up here right so then we can say, uh, if it's a data cube, we we'll step somewhere else, and then, so we're gonna keep looping through this, like that, right? Okay, let's try that. What happened? 
Okay, so hang on a second. So this person is... Oh yeah, we need to have a step here too, right? Okay, that should do it. <laughs> oh, come on. What's going on now? Hang on, let me slow it down a little bit. Okay, what's the problem here? So he steps... Oh, hang on a second. They have to move this back up here too, right? After the drop. And then we have to move this into here. So it doesn't jump, so it just ends, right? So that means that this jump here is no longer needed. Ah, we got it! Great! So we used 13 commands, but our average was below 52 seconds target was 55 so we did less jumps please you can make this one super slow by making it random movement this kind of program ain't for you but can we just rewind the last part okay well look here hey so what we're doing is okay so we have memory one set to the nearest printer okay so we can say take from memory one which is the printer so they'll always jump back up and do this, okay? So they'll jump back up and, and take from the printer. So they take from the printer and then they take a random step. So they pick up from the printer here and then they take a random step, okay? And then they check to see if where they're standing has a data cube on it. And if it does have a data cube on it, uh, they step randomly away from it. Otherwise, if there isn't a data cube on it and they're standing on nothing, they drop it and then they add one to their counter, okay? Because they can only each drop five things, okay? So this counter gets incremented every time they drop something. So that we're looking to see if the counter equals five, because they can only drop five things. And if it does equal five, we tell them to stop, okay? Otherwise, they come through and they jump and they do it all again. And they do it five times. And that's, that's, that's this mess here. That's them doing the whole thing. Oh, that was a fun one. I like that. Printing etiquette one. All right, good. Done. Printing etiquette two. Year 40. What was it? Year 61 is the one that I have to try. Here we are again. Yes, it appears our polite printing pamphlet was out of date in the previous assignment. And we wasted 25 data cubes. Please enjoy your updated assignment. Go copy the solution from your previous assignment and paste it here. Once again, each worker uh, must print exactly five data cubes, but this time, each worker must label their cubes one through five in any order you like, place them anywhere on the floor. Okay, well that's fine. So we can paste. So we have to go back to the other one? I mean, how do I even do that? So I could copy this. Oh wow. That's pretty good. You can copy and paste your other solutions. Okay, so now we paste this. Okay, so once again each worker must print exactly five data cubes, but this time each worker must label their cubes one through five in any order you like, place them anywhere. Okay, so that's fine. So um, once we get the thing, we're going to uh, we're gonna do it this way, but before we drop it, we are going to uh, write on the cube uh, the value of mem2 and then drop it, right? We 
We did it. That was the best. We did it in 14 steps and our speed was bang on. 55 seconds. 55 seconds on average. Yeah, you can get rid of the first step in the second if statement for the nine instruction goal. Okay. It's pretty cool that you could copy the previous one. That's nuts, eh? Alright, printing etiquette two, done. Image decryptor. You're 41, we're getting there. Happy birthday to me, how nice. I was sent a birthday image from my bank, but it's a secure image and they encrypted it. Now I have to figure out how to view it. Yes, I'll just log in here to, to my secure online banking portal and verify my security questions and type in the security code they sent to my mobile device. Type in my previous four addresses and accept the updated terms and conditions and agree to paperless communication and navigate the tutorial on how they recently slightly redesigned one of the buttons on the website and decline a credit card offer and decline another one. Okay, here we go. Here's how to view your birthday image. An image of a lady here with a big hairdo says, It's so easy! They say we have to move each cube to the left. The number of tiles listed on each cube. Once that's complete, my personal birthday greeting will appear. Oh boy, I can't wait. Okay, move each data cube to the left. The number of tiles listed on each cube. For example, if a cube says three, must move to the left three tiles. Since this important birthday message is private, all workers must then exit the room by stepping into one of the conveniently placed infinite pit holes. Enjoy. Okay, so there's a worker next to each cube, which is fine. Okay, so we want to um, step to the left. We want to pick up what's here. Um, and then we want to um, set mem1 to be um, my item, right? The value of my item. And then we would like to step in this direction. Can't do like a four, can we? We don't have four. So we can get the value. Oh, okay, hang on. So we can say if um, if mem1 uh, is uh, not equal to uh, zero, then we can say uh, step step left. And then we can um, calc mem1 equals uh, mem1 minus 1, right? And then we can just jump and do it that way. And then else, we would like to... Um, okay, hang on. So if... If it's not equal to zero, then we keep stepping until it equals to, to zero. And then once it does equal to zero, um, we drop it and then we try to move to... So hang on. Uh, so this guy is going to move one, this three, eleven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it looks like they're always going to end around here, right? Around here. So then we want to um, step up. We'll have we'll have them all step up. We could just make an infinite loop here, right? It doesn't matter until they die. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, uh, look, it's beautiful. Look, it's a little man with eyes. That's the birthday message. Well, isn't that nice? It looks just like me. Happy birthday to me. We did it. Use eight or fewer commands. We used 11. Um, and the optional speed challenge we did in 31 seconds. The target was 15 seconds. But we did it. Send them to the nearest hole. Infinite loops. Step up to the streets. Oh, well, we did it step up or down can you not go to the nearest hole 
I suppose you could, yeah. It would have just added, like, more commands, though, when we could just get them to infinitely step up and then fall in the hole, right? A win is a win. That's right. Tighten some bolts on this one. I don't think we need to. Do not like this kind of coding. It feels very restrained with this. This is like polybridge, but coding. Are we going to ban today? Yes. We are. <laughs> We are going to bed. Continue to elevator. We did it. Image decrepter is done. Polybridge, but shit. No, Polybridge was great though, right? Maybe we need to play Polybridge again because there's some missions we haven't done yet, right? Multiplication table. Should we try this one? Multiplication table. Oh no, all my email and data on my personal computer got wiped. How does this keep happening to me? Well, now we need to recreate this multiplication table so I can look stuff up. Like if a sandwich contains two calories, and if I eat 400 sandwiches, how come I still want to eat more sandwiches? That's multiplication. See that grid over there? Each cube should be the product of the row and column headers. So I'll leave it to you to rewrite those cubes. Phew, I haven't done this much math since the third grade. Fill in the multiplication table where each cube is the product of the row and column headers. Okay, tip for management. Please avoid picking up the row and column headers. They explode. Okay, so we can't pick them up. Right, okay, so we have to, um, so we have to say, we have to put the, the products of uh, these in. And we have to somehow figure out so we go like nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we know by like the row that we're at, so we can use counters for it. The only thing is though, is that we have to like start off by saying if a uh, direction ahead of you is nothing, that we would like you to step uh, up, right? So that everybody is in line and they can all start from the same place. And then we can then say if what's in front of you is a data queue, um, then we can say, um, we can set, before we start anything, we can set, set mem1 to 9, right? Um, and then we could say, um, nine. And then we can, we can decrease this counter as they go up. But then we need to, uh, to find a way for these people to get um, the number that they are, right? So like this guy has to be one, this guy has to be two, this guy has to be three, this guy has to be four, this guy has to be five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We need some way for them to, to know which um, column they're in. And then if we can get the value from that column and set that as mem2, right? Mem2 could be set to to that column number and then we just do the um and then we just do the calculation we write it onto the cube we can't pick up the cube though please avoid picking up the row and column headers oh okay it's just the row and column headers but we can actually pick up the because we have to pick up the cube to write it but we can't pick up the row and column headers um okay that's fine so I think what we want to do first is we'll step them up um, and then uh, and then we would like to do a thing whereby we get them all the way up to the top here, right? So that they can then set their values for, um, for set two so that they can get their column things. So they can grab the, the value from that, I'm pretty sure. If they're standing right on it, they don't need to pick it up. Get the, val the, the value from that and then we can work our way down together and do the calculations, right? I think that'll be the way to do it. But this game takes place within the mind of the whacker. It does. It really does, yeah. So we're just gonna step up. We're, well, we're probably gonna step down because we have to get up here to get these uh, column headers. They need to each read their column headers so that we know like what to what to multiply by, right? So in, in actual fact, we can set this to um, 1 and then increase it that way, right? 
because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get everybody into the same line and then we're going to move them. Well, actually, we don't even need to do that. So we step them, we keep stepping them up to start with, okay? So we say if a, what above you is um, not equal to uh, the wall, then step up. Otherwise, we want you to um, calc. Mem2 is going to be... Um, Mem2 plus um, my item. Okay. I think we want set for this. So Mem2, we're gonna set it to zero to start with. Okay, so you step up until you hit the wall, okay? So they'll hit the wall, and then once they've hit the wall, we want you to, um, set mem2 to, um, to that value, right? So actually that can just go there. Okay, so that will set mem2 and then set mem1. Right, and then we want everybody to, um, drop down. Wait, we want to jump this too. So once they've done that, then we can jump them out of here, down to here. So then we want everybody to step down um, one, right? Because they'll be standing on here and they'll step down to one. Okay, and then if the direction below you is equal to uh, data queue, then we want to uh, step down. We want to pick up the data queue. But we want to write the value of uh, mem. Oh no, hang on a second. We want to do a calc. So we want to say um, mem2. This is going to be mem3, isn't it? So we're going to say mem3 is the calculation of uh, mem1 times mem2. Mem2 is the is the um, counter. Is no, hang on a second. Mem2 is calc one okay yeah okay so we calc that mem one and then we write mem three to the thing and drop it and then we increment mem one i think yeah and then we so we calc mem one equals mem one plus one and then we jump that Yeah, that should work. We did it. We did it in 16 commands, and it took us 71 seconds. Target was 53. But we did it. Yeah. It should work. Are we running a stack registry? No. As a deeply homosexual man, this is hard to watch. <laughs> Extra lemons, I know I know how you feel about that. You can replace the two jumps with a jump in the first if. Okay. All the doubters can burn. <laughs> All the doubters can burn. Right. I mean, we're not doing it, like, efficiently or whatever, but we did do it, right? We did it. So that's multiplication table done. Important email organization. Man, some of these are really fun, actually. Some of them are really fun. Welcome to my email inbox. Yes, each of those cubes on the floor represents one of my important emails. Your other boss said she would help me organize them. She very nicely made 10 folders for me down there at the bottom. She labeled them 0 to 9. She said we need to sort my emails into these 10 folders. For example, emails with a number from 20 to 29 go into the 2 folder. Emails with a number from 70 to 79 go into the 7 folder. Emails with a number of 0 to 9 go into the 0 folder. Got it. I don't really understand email, but I'm lucky to have such a good friend. Okay, thanks for your help, guys. Alright, so data cubes 0 to 9 must be sent to the shredder labeled 0. Data cubes 10 to 19 must be sent to the shredder labeled 1. 
20 to 29 need to go to 2, etc. Do not pick up the label 0 to 9 directly above each shredder. They will explode. All right. So we have to... So hang on. As soon as we start this, we'll get uh, numbers, right? So we want to say nearest um, data cube. Nearest data cube is kind of uh, dangerous though, right? Because they'll eventually pick up these ones. So we want to say that if uh, the direction um, is not equal to a shredder, then pick it up. Pick up the data cube, right? Uh, otherwise, um, do nothing. Because if they pick this up, it'll explode and it'll end. So they can only pick up data cubes that aren't adjacent to a shredder. That will be the first check, right? Um, so we want to uh, pick up mem1, right? We want to pick it up. Pick up mem1. Okay, so that's them picking up the data cubes. And then they need to uh, find... We can have four memories when there's nine things. So we can't keep those, we can't keep those in memory. So we'll have to like program around it, I think. No? That logic will pick up the cubes above the shredder. I don't think they can walk onto the shredder though. They can't get, they can't get onto the shredder itself, right? So then we need to, um, we need to somehow direct these people to the right places. So data cube, if your data cube is zero to nine, you have to go to the shredder labeled zero, right? So we have to have some way for them to, uh, move all the way down to the shredder and then find which way they need to go. Hey Sips, how are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm at home today with an ocular migraine. An ocular I feel awful migraine. but just wanted to say thanks for keeping me while I feel like my What's head is exploding migraine? from the inside out. Keep up the awesome work, Sips. Purple Assassin 2, thanks so much, man. I hope you feel better. I don't know what an ocular migraine is, but it sounds painful. And I hope that you get through it. And thanks so much. Thanks. You're about, your migraine's about to get even worse if you're watching me play this right now the worst this is a tough one actually so we have to send data cubes 0 to 9 to the shredder labeled 0 and then so on and so forth so they, we have to have like ranges we ha we're working with ranges so we're probably gonna have like a lot of different ifs right like for this you'd want to use like a case you would want to use like a case structure right because like you have all of these all of these different ranges but I don't think we can do that so we're gonna have to do it with like a ton of ifs do ton of ifs. Uh, okay, so we can pick up a cube as long as it's... Okay, so they've all picked up their cubes. So that's fine. Okay, and then we want to read... Um, we want to read the value of the cube. Actually, we probably just want them to walk all the way down, right? And then throw the thing into the right shredder. So once they've picked up the cube, we want them to um, step down so we want to say um if below you is uh, not equal to uh shredder we want you to step down we want to keep jumping that and then otherwise else uh we would like you to <sighs> then we have to do the range stuff as well in here right so we have to say like um step down else if um, your item is um, greater than or equal to zero and uh, your item is uh, less than or equal to nine god we have to see like where we are as well we have to like somehow go to this label zero
So, act so we probably want them to start, like, from zero, right? We don't want them to just all walk down and be randomly here. We probably want them to, like, start in a line and then work their way up and drop the thing to where they need to. So instead of stepping um, down, we want to... We want to step them, like, over here. So if... Um, this direction here is not equal to a wall. Keep stepping. So we'll get them over to the wall, right? And then uh, else we want you to step. So we want to say if um, is equal to a wall, then we want you to step to the left. And then we want you to step down. Okay, and then we say if your item is greater than or equal to zero and is equal to zero, then um, give to there, else. Step forward. Oh, hang on a second. Zero to nine, and then zero. Can we do something with the with the mems here? Probably not, right? We're just gonna have to have like. Do we have to hard code all these in like this? So then we jump back up to here from here, right? We probably want them to like, because they'll be just standing there. This will never happen because they'll be standing right next to a shredder. So actually, we want to say like step up and away from the shredder. Maybe step up again. Let's just see if we can get like one guy to do this. Okay, so they keep going over to the wall oh do they have to keep going down as well oh my god this is so much already i think that i don't think this is right at all it's it, it's like super long-winded and then we're gonna have to add like a ton of these as well which i don't think we want to be doing right we shouldn't have to do that we have to say that oh hang on a second zero to nine has to go into zero It has to go into one, two. So the zero to nine one is 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 tricky, but can we take the? We can't take the first number of a number of uh, digits either, right? So we can't say like if the first number in this in the in the string of numbers is a two, and put it into two. And and anyway, I think we'd be stuck in the well. We might be able to do something around that, but I don't think we can do it, right? I don't think we can get, like, the first number out of a string of, like, numbers. I don't think we have, like, a, a, a command for that yet. Um... Unless we don't do this wall thing, and then we just get them to all... Here, let me just, um... We can get them to come down to the shredder this way by going to the nearest shredder, right? So we can like step two, mem two, and then we can do the check that way. So they're just gonna rush down to their nearest shredder and do nothing. Okay, that's fine. So they get to their shredder. Um, so then we wanna say like, uh, if your item 
um, is equal to God. Zero to nine. It has to be between zero and nine. But we have to check each one, right? So they make it down to their um so they make it down to the shredder. And then we could we could get them to just move left all the way. How are we gonna make them go to the right thing? Oh, this is a tricky one. How do we make them go to the right thing? We can get them to pick up a cube, and then we get them to go to the shredder, and then um, once they're at the shredders, then they have to see what number they're standing on. So if I'm holding something between zero and nine, it has to go into zero, right? We can't like multiply. We can't we can't do multiplication against zero. We can't do multiplication to figure out which label they have to be at. And then we can't put each label into the memory either, right? Because we don't have enough memory slots, we only have four. So we couldn't do that either. So we can't like, we can't set that as like a destination for them to go to. We can't pick up the labels, but we probably wouldn't do that anyway. We need some way for them to go through and check each one until it's right, I guess. So that's gonna say that's gonna that's gonna be a big like if right if my item is um, less than or equal to greater than or equal to zero and my item is less than or equal to nine and what I'm standing on equals zero. then give that to the shredder. Else, I don't know, step. Let's start all over again. Okay, so none of these guys will do it. They'll step over. And then they'll try to step right as well, right? I mean, unless we make them just step to the nearest shredder, but they'll be right next to their nearest shredder. So we'd have to have them step over. So we can have them step in either direction until they find what they're looking for, maybe? Does that work? Okay, they do seem to randomly sort of walk through and potentially get to most of them. So that might work. So we just need a clever way of, of doing this, right? So if my item... So how do we... How do we separate these things out, right? How do we separate these, these different things out so they can give it... So they give to it, and then they um, go to the nearest wall? No. They go to... Where do we send them to after? They have to just, like, walk up, right? They have to just keep walking up. So that, that works, right? We just have to figure out what to put in here. 
I'm not looking at chat. <laughs> I can see it scrolling. I'm not looking at it. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'll get salty if I look at it. I mean, <laughs> the only time I'm gonna look at it is if I want to. If I feel the overwhelming urge to ban someone, or uh, if I pass a level and I want people to congratulate me <laughs> and I want to read those nice messages. That's the only. Hey, by the way, I started a bit late, but I've eaten my lunch already, so I don't need to go on a big break. So there's that too, right? That's good. No. I'm a beautiful man. Uh, I looked over just at the right time, Tef. You're the best. Thanks so much. God damn. Big round of applause for Tef. For just being a decent human being, right? Unlike the rest of you animals in Twitch chat. If everybody was a bit more like Tef, the world would be a better place. Am I right? That's right. I'm right. I'm right about that. You're doing great, Dad. Cookie Mart. You're the best too. If, if more people were like Cookie Mart, god damn this world would be a fantastic place to live. As it stands right now, it sucks. Balls. But if more people were like Cookie Mart, it would be amazing. It would be the best. God, it would be the best. Jeez, it would be the best. Um... How do I do this? I don't want to just put like a ton of ifs in here. I can check for the first one, but I need to see... I need to go through and check the others as well. Bo, 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 bo. So we know that if like the number starts with a 1, we want to put it in a 1. Likewise, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But we have no way of seeing like if a number starts with we don't there's no like string um there's no like string or like or or convert like a like an integer to a string and then compare like the, the parts of it or anything we can't do anything like that so my item is greater than or equal to zero and uh less than or equal to nine and that zero so that's like hard code. It'd be interesting to see actually if somebody picks up. So this two should find its way over, right? And he should chuck it out. So at least we can check this. He's doing it. Nope. Yeah. 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 Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yes. Nope. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Do it. Come on, move. <laughs> move over. <laughs> Come on. They're not gonna move, are they? It's not gonna work. God damn it. So they either move to the side or to the to, to the left or to the right, but then they after they've passed each other a couple of times. Okay, there's none in that one. There's a nine here. So once they've gotten past each other, they don't seem to pass each other again. They just get stuck like like this. There's no there's no way for them to do it. So then we can even we could put even more logic in to like tell them where to step to exactly, I suppose. Depending like where they are now and where they need to go. And we could do that with the help of calc and maybe mem three and four. But holy shit, that would be fucking difficult too, right? Or would it? Six. Okay, maybe we do need this actually. So we set. So wherever we get to. And then we go down to the shredder, right? Step down to the shredder. Pick up and step to the shredder. And once we're at this at the shredder. Once we're at the shredder, then we say mem3 equals that, right? 
than when we're at MIM-3. So hang on a second. So MIM-3 for, say, this guy is set to 3. So that's where he ended up first. So he's at 3. So he's at 3 and he's holding what exactly? It doesn't matter. He 